Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, men and women of the 9th Reconnaissance Wing and Recce Town, USA. On behalf of the presiding official, Commander, 16th Air Force, Lieutenant General Kevin B. Kennedy, welcome to Beale Air Force Base in the 9th Reconnaissance Wing Change of Command Ceremony, where Colonel Jeffrey Church will relinquish command and Colonel Keegan McLeese will assume command. Additionally, the Command Chief of the 9th Reconnaissance Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Brianna Oliver, will relinquish responsibilities and Chief Master Sergeant Stephen Creek will assume responsibilities in a change of responsibility ceremony. I am Chief Master Sergeant Jennifer Barger, your narrator for this ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and remain standing for the arrival of the official party, posting of the colors by Beale Honor Guard, singing of the national anthem by Staff Sergeant Clarence Bennett, followed by the invocation by Chaplain Philip Stewart. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight? O'er the ramparts we watched Weren't so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave For the land of the free and the home of the brave
I invite you to observe a moment of silence or to pray in your tradition as I pray in mine. Almighty Lord of earth and skies, I give you thanks for all that Colonel Jeffrey Church has done with your aid as our wing commander, for the leadership and legacy that will shape this installation for years to come, yet also for the lives touched and changed for the better by who he is and his stark and unwavering commitment to character as one who leads in the fight to end the fight and bring us safely home. Bless him and his family in their next adventure and guide them in all that they do, that this family may come together and rise to the occasion of what you give to each of them. I ask also your blessing on Colonel Keegan McLeese as he assumes command. Place your hand upon him as we look to him for leadership, strength, compassion, and honor. Bless his family as they join our family here and lead us all into a future of significance. Bless our senior enlisted leaders as they transition responsibility and empower them to choose rightly and wisely as they are dear to us. Bless now this ceremony and all present, as well as those who could not be here, especially those separated from loved ones, deployed or in harm's way. Continue to bless our nation and all who serve her in unity, simplicity, and victory. To you who made both the skies and the men and women who seek to rule them, I now pray, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Thank you, Beale Honor Guard, Staff Sergeant Bennett for that beautiful rendition of the National Anthem, and Chaplain Stewart for that powerful indication. The Ninth Reconnaissance Wing would like to extend a special welcome to the families of the official party. Please hold your applause until the end. Joining us are Colonel Church's wife, Elizabeth, and their daughters, Eloise and Vivian, along with his father, Mr. Stuart Church. Colonel McLeese's wife, Dorothy, and their children, Corton, Carolyn, Madeline, and Caven. His parents, Inspector Randy and Mrs. Donna McLeese. Also, his aunt and uncle, Dr. Brian and Mrs. Lori Corton. Division Chief, J3, ISR Operations, Colonel Ryan Tipolt. Deputy Commander, 49th Wing, Colonel Alfred Rosales and his wife, Michaela. Colonel Stella and Bruce Barley, U.S. Air Force, retired. Mr. Chris Taylor and his daughters, Sarah and Abigail. Miss Crystal Saylor and her sons, Jack and Nathan. Mrs. Hannah and Mr. Daniel Stefanski. Dr. Michael Zagoda. Chief Creek's wife, Kathleen, and their daughter, Sadie. We would all also like to recognize the following distinguished guests. Please hold your applause until after the last distinguished guest is recognized. Command Chief, 16th Air Force, Chief Master Sergeant Robert Hopkins. Deputy Commander, 9th Reconnaissance Wing, Colonel James Bartrand's wife, Jackie. Commander, 940th Air Refueling Wing, Colonel Andrew Gray. Deputy Commander, 940th Air Refueling Wing, Colonel Troy Ogle. Command Chief, 940th Air Refueling Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Teresa Serrano. Deputy Commander, 195th Wing, Colonel Laura Lopez. Commander, 9th Operations Group, Colonel Charles Cameron's wife, Kim. Senior Enlisted Leader, 9th Operations Group, Chief Master Sergeant David Olmstead's wife, Amber. Commander, 9th Maintenance Group, Colonel Craig Bailey's wife, Lori. Commander, 9th Medical Group, Colonel Keegan Lyons' wife, Sheila. Commander, 940th Operations Group, Colonel Ryan Evans. Commander, 940th Mission Support Group, Colonel Gloria Moran. Commander, 548th Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance Group, Colonel Richard Shermer and his wife, Angela, and their children, Madison, David, Jake, and Sam. Senior Enlisted Leader, 548th Surveillance and Reconnaissance Group, Chief Master Sergeant Michael Murphy, Major General H.D. Jake Palumbo, U.S. Air Force, retired. Colonel Frederick Kuhlman, U.S. Air Force, retired. District Representative to the Congressman Doug LaMalfa, Mr. David Morgan. Ninth Reconnaissance Wing Honorary Commander, Mr. Willie Whittlesey. Ninth Reconnaissance Wing Honorary Deputy Commander, Mr. Lon Hatamaya. 
Honorary Commander, Owners of the Happy Viking, Mrs. Sandy and Mr. Christopher Drown. Owner, John Cassidy and Associates, Mr. John Cassidy. Beale Military Liaison Council Chair, Ms. Janie Nall. BMLC members, Ms. Sammy Nall, Mrs. Fran Peace, Mrs. Kelly Sheeran, and Mr. Rigo Diaz. Beale High Flyer, Mr. Tom Walther and his wife Robin. Wheatland Police Department Chief, Brian Whitmer. Uber Water Agency, Ms. Jackie Silman. Yuba College, Ms. Tanya Terish. AKT Development, Ms. Julie Hansen. And members of the Grace Bible Church, We would additionally like to extend a warm welcome to all commanders, chiefs, civilian leaders, first sergeants, families, friends, community partners, and the men and women of Team Beale who are joining us today. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce Lieutenant General Kevin B. Kennedy. All right, Commander of Troops, please put the formation at ease. All right, I'm sorry, arrest. Air Force guy, put them at rest for me so they can move around. Thanks. Okay, what a fantastic day, and thank you for joining us here. From the uh, introductions, I, I don't know who's working, but uh, that's okay. We'll make it happen. But uh, Jake, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. So good morning. Thank you for joining the Airmen of the Ninth Reconnaissance Wing today as we mark a key milestone in their history. The change of command from Colonel Jeffrey Church to Colonel Keegan McLeese. And the change of responsibility from Chief Master Sergeant Brianna Oliver to Chief Master Sergeant Stephen Creek. Our narrator has already introduced our distinguished guests and I offer my personal thanks for your attendance. It means a great deal that you prioritize this event amongst the many demands on your time and schedule. I would also like to thank the team that pulled this ceremony together. As with any successful military operation, detailed planning and aggressive execution are vital, and ceremonies are no different. Thank you to the many airmen who made today's event a reality. Our project officers, Lieutenant Colonel Dale Ellis, Captain Joshua Gilmer, Captain Joselle Smith, and Technical Sergeant Tasha Kopp. The 9th Reconnaissance Wing Protocol Team, led by Chief of Protocol Ms. Christina Meyer, Technical Sergeant Amanda Boone, and Staff Sergeant Andrew Bowick. Our narrator, Chief Master Sergeant Jennifer Barger, and our chaplain, Chaplain DeLon, for the invocation, as well as the Beale Air Force Base Honor Guard and the many, many volunteers who help with logistics. Finally, a big thank you to Staff Sergeant Clarence Bennett for his beautiful rendition of our national anthem. Please join me in a round of applause. So today, as the presiding officer, I have three tasks. First, recognize the leadership and teamwork of Colonel Jeffrey Mako Church and Chief Master Sergeant Brianna Oliver. Recognize their selfless service, and as well as the selfless service of their families. Second, celebrate the tremendous accomplishments of the men and women of the 9th Reconnaissance Wing who flourished under Colonel Church's and Chief Oliver's tenure. And third, Welcome Colonel McLeese, Chief Creek, and their families to the ninth. I'll begin with Colonel Church and Chief Oliver's leadership and service. Leading a wing of the scale, scope, and complexity of the ninth is no small task. There are few leaders in our history who have led an organization of the magnitude of the ninth reconnaissance wing. 4,500 total force airmen, four groups, 24 squadrons scattered across the globe in a total of six worldwide locations. Together, Colonel Church and Chief Oliver cultivated a resilient team that achieved critical mission outcomes with significant impact for our nation. Their strength lay in leveraging the talents and capabilities of every team member, empowering airmen to tackle a myriad of complex challenges and maximizing mission outcomes mission outcomes for a unique global enterprise while cultivating a civil mill relationship that is second to none. Bottom line, Colonel Church 
and Chief Oliver led the 9th Reconnaissance Wing to new levels of excellence. Now let's take a moment to celebrate those successes that occurred on their watch. First, the 9th was laser focused on growing the Common Missions Control Center and leveraging the wing's position to make Beale the hub for operations in the future. During this time, the wing executed multiple new construction projects and facility upgrades. Upgrades to support accelerated common mission control center operations. The 9th expanded their operations by activating two detach detachments and projecting the activation of three additional detachments by September of 2025. The wing focused on improving base infrastructure and resiliency through several key projects to include driving a Western Area Power Administration substation interconnect, repairing the Doolittle substation, upgrading the wastewater treatment plant, and repairing the Wheatland Entry Control Point. These efforts increase the base posture, improve the welfare of our airmen, and in turn, increase their mission effectiveness. Finally, the wing simultaneously ensured U2 global support while executing the department's divest divestment planning, adapting swiftly to new guidance and operational needs without ever missing a beat. Across the wing, it was clear that though the story may be concluding, the airmen of the 9th were going to write the final chapter. Write the final chapter in a way that aligned with the legacy of that many airmen who had stewarded the U-2 during her long life. As we celebrate the success of the 9th, <clears throat> it is clear that Colonel Church and Chief Oliver have been the right airmen to lead this wing at this moment in our nation's history. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't take time, opportunity to thank their families. Colonel Church's wife, Liz, their children, Eloise and Vivian, and Chief Oliver's husband, Joseph, and their daughters, Kendall and Campbell. Your support to the 9th Reconnaissance Wing over the past two years has been a gift to our airmen. <clears throat> Excuse me. A gift of your time and your energy. A gift in enabling Jeff's and Brianna's service. And a gift in that you willingly shared them with over 4,000 airmen and their families. As we wish you clear skies for the next journey, please know we are forever in your debt. Mako, you've had a tremendous impact on the defense of our nation. As you relinquish command, know that you made a difference, a difference in the lives of our airmen, and will be remembered for years to come as a superb leader and an airman who thinks deeply about the application of air power and empowering airmen. Chief Oliver, you've been the epitome of a wing command chief, the consummate wingman, the consummate professional, the consummate leader, wishing you clear skies in the next chapter. Now, as two leaders depart the pattern, two more enter. Colonel McLeese joins the wing leadership team direct from the 56th Fighter Wing at Luke Air Force Base, Arizona. He is joined by his family, his wife Dottie, and their children, Carolyn, Madeline, Caven, and Quatron. And Quatron, who is currently at my alma mater, going through basic training at the United States Air Force Academy. Liz is too, by the way. Um, Chief Creek joins us, the wing leadership team, directly from the 8th Fighter Wing at Kunsan Air Force Base, Korea. He is joined by his family, his wife Kathleen, Kathleen sorry, and their daughter Sadie. Welcome to Beale. Beale Air Force Base in sunny Northern California. Now, there may be few similarities between Korea and Arizona and Northern California. However, there is one constant. You will find that the dedicated airmen you grew to know so well and respect in Arizona and Korea are very much the same airmen here at Beale. Thank you for your support to Keegan, Stephen, and the 9th Reconnaissance Wing. Now, when selecting a wing commander, I look for leaders who build teams, communicate their vision, and are continually seeking connection with the airmen who are entrusted to their command, as well as continually seeking a deeper understanding and insight into the mission they are charged to lead. Colonel McLeese is that airman. Colonel McLeese has excelled throughout his career. His deep understanding of the air domain and the deep partnerships necessary to succeed across the interagency and the joint forces is unparalleled. You can see in your program the many positions he has held across his career, but what you cannot see are the endorsements of Colonel McLeese's leadership and endorsements of his expertise. Endorsements by the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the former Commander of Air Combat Command, the Director of the Department of Defense Special Access Programs, 
as well as the former commander of 19th Air Force. I have no doubt Colonel McLeese is the right airman to take the flag from Colonel Church and lead the 9th Reconnaissance Wing to new heights. Chief Creek is equally impressive and it is very clear to me why Colonel Church and Colonel McLeese chose him to be on Colonel McLeese's wing. In closing, I want to speak directly to the airmen of the 9th represented today by this formation. We are in a decisive decade, a decade that will set the course of our nation's security for the next century. In this decade, the People's Republic of China is the pacing challenge, and Russia will remain the acute threat to our national security. You are in a unique position to defend our nation. You are key to the joint force as we pursue, expose, and contest our adversaries each and every day. You are shaping the future of information warfare through excellence and reconnaissance operations. Your knowledge, your expertise will remain in high demand, and I'm thankful for your service to this wing, our numbered Air Force, and our nation. I'm incredibly proud of your accomplishments during Colonel Church's and Chief Oliver's tenure, and I'm looking forward to see what you will achieve with Colonel McLeese and Chief Creek in the seat. Your leadership, your Air Force, and your nation are on your wing. As our song says, off we go. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant General Kennedy. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the presentation of the Legion of Merit to outgoing Commander Colonel Jeffrey Church. Publish the order. Attention to orders. Citation to accompany the award of the Legion of Merit First Oak Leaf Cluster to Jeffrey I. Church. Colonel Jeffrey I. Church distinguished himself by exceptionally meritorious conduct in the performance of outstanding service to the United States as Commander 9th Reconnaissance Wing, Beale Air Force Base, California, from 7 June 2022 to 9 July 2024. During this period, Colonel Church's exemplary ability, diligence, and devotion to duty were instrumental in resolving many complex problems of great importance to the Air Force and nation. He led four groups, 24 squadrons, six A staff directors, and the Air Force Combat Ammunition Center, synchronizing essential programs and processes across the 23,000-acre base and five geographically separated units. As installation commander, he enabled tenant unit execution of KC-135 air refueling, distributed ground control system, and Space Force upgraded early warning radar operations. Responsible for more than 7,000 total force personnel and a $206 million annual budget, Colonel Church's guidance was vital to the wing's first Dragon Flag employment for 58 members across seven weapon systems. Furthermore, Colonel Church ushered the Air Force into the future by standing up four groups and overseeing the first continental United States high-altitude intercept of a foreign balloon with 14 hours notification. He also ushered a $141 million infrastructure project, posturing the Common Mission Control Center for a 500% expansion to three combatant commands. Moreover, he executed Beale's first multi-capable airman training for 24 students, trailblazing force generation deployment modeling for other major commands. Colonel Church's leadership was critical in guiding the wing through the initial divestiture planning of the U-2 program, ensuring follow-on placements for over 500 personnel, setting the stage to retire an $8 billion fleet and the sunset of three forward operating locations. Finally, he established an organizational culture that fostered leadership, accountability, innovation, and teamwork, earning the wing an effective rating across all major graded areas of the Air Combat Command Unit Effectiveness Inspection. The superior initiative Outstanding leadership and personal endeavor displayed by Colonel Church reflect great credit upon himself and the United States Air Force. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Colonel Jeffrey Church, 
will now address the 9th Reconnaissance Wing for the last time as commander. What's up, y'all? <laughs> hey, so uh, let us start uh, the same way tr traditionally that I will always start. Sergeant Bennett, where are you? Where'd you go? Dude, man, that was world class, brother. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Um, Chaplain Stewart, dude, thank you. As always, right, you have a voice for radio, my friend. Dude, I love you. Um, Dale, Josh, DJ, Cobb, thank you very much for putting on this ceremony. Right, it means a great deal, I know, to myself, my family, and to Colonel McLeese and his family. Dude, it's going off without a hitch. Thank you very much. Um, to our protocol team, Tall Man, Boone, and uh, Christina. Christina, you're almost done. Where are you? Dude, you're, you're almost done. Like, this, how many more do you have? Like, one, two, three? Three more to go, right? And then change of command season is done, and then, like, you can just ride off to the sunset, right, to Florida. So, thank you very much. Chief Barger. Thank you very much for choosing to narrate uh, this endeavor, and thank you for being my stunt command chief, right, while the other one decided that she wanted to walk away and go back to Texas. But chief, it's been truly a pleasure. Thank you. I still think you're choosing the incorrect option, but that's just me. Um, to the honor guard, dude, you guys killed it as always. Thank you very much. Um, Lieutenant General Kennedy, sir, thank you very much for allowing all of your wing commanders, I mean, I don't know about the 688th and the 67th, but all the rest of our wing commander, all the rest of your wing commanders, right, um, to lead in the way that we wanted to lead um, and to really empower us to just go get after the mission um, and not really be in our business day to day. Um, that was a um, supremely thankful and thank you for the trust and confidence in me and my family right to continue on this journey. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Waldo and Team McLeese, man, 23,000 acres, bro. 110 miles of power lines, flood season to fire season, back to flood season. Like, dude, it's awesome, right? It's great. Um, <laughs> please make good use, right, of the loop and the fire pit out there. You will be able to solve many problems amongst the family, amongst the installation, right, out on the, fire, out on the loop, okay? Um, you are exactly the team that the wing needs right now. Um, and it's your turn now to take the baton and sprint your two laps. That makes sense? Um, to the 940th team, mission partners from the 940th, I'm sorry that we didn't actually get to meet, but uh, hopefully your house is adequate, right, um, for you. Um, we will also do our best, right, to make sure that the mobiles don't drive underneath the KC-135s. Although I was told that they didn't drive under the 135s, but like, dude, it's... Anyway, we truly appreciate your guys' mission, and we look forward to continuing to support you guys. Uh, to the 195th, man, it's good seeing you guys. Dude, I truly appreciate you guys being out here. Um, thank you for coming out, and uh, do not swelter in the heat of your building, right? Please let us know, right, if your HVAC fails, right, and like, Bog can get it fixed. Or Brennan, it's still the year of the HVAC, right? Still the year of the HVAC, got it. Um, General Palumbo, sir, thank you very much for the mentorship. Thank you very much for the coaching, the teaching. I really appreciate you being out here. Thank you very much. And I'm sure Waldo will very much appreciate the text that he gets um, from you. Major General Clough, sir, thank you very much for showing up. Um, we appreciate, I, I treasure the shared conversations that we have had back when you were a wing commander and I was a squadron commander and look forward to trying to move right, this um, enterprise right, a little bit further. To the entire Northrop team that's here, gentlemen, thank you very much for showing up. Mr. Shim, thank you very much for uh, coming out and then supporting the uh, Ninth Wing. Um, Mr. Morgan, thank you very much to, uh, for coming out and supporting from Congressman LaMalfa's office. Um, we truly appreciate the partnership right, that we have with our local representatives and our U.S. representatives, and thank you very much. Vice Mayor Shaw, right now, right? Yeah, Vice Mayor, soon to be mayor again. Right? Yeah, it's just like it's just this rotation that you just keep on keep on doing. Thank you very much for coming out. Right, we truly appreciate uh, you guys and what uh, Yuba County does for us. My man, Willie. Thank you, brother. Um, hopefully, you will be able to um, expel all of the demons. Right, that you may have had on your T-38 flight. Right, and you've somewhat recovered. 
right from those demons, but I truly appreciate the partnership with both you as well as with the Yuba Water Agency. For both you and Lon and the whole crew and Ms. Silman, thank you very much. Right, it's been absolutely phenomenal to work with you guys. I look forward to keeping in touch. Janie Nall and the whole BMLC board, I am truly thankful and humbled right, at the support that the BMLC team gives to the men and women and the airmen right, of the Ninth Reconnaissance Swing. Um, thank you very much. I don't think I'll be back in August for the golf tournament, um, but I look forward to coming back at some point in time, probably after Waldo leaves, right, to be able to come back right, for the golf tournament and then um, you know, hang out. John Cassidy. Yeah, I don't know if anybody knows this or not, but we probably wouldn't have had the Air Force Ball at the uh, Hard Rock this past year if it wasn't for John Cassidy and Jackie Silman, right? So we truly appreciate you and the efforts that you right, put forth for our local community. So thank you very much, John. And I'm sorry that I wasn't able, able to make it to Shasta to go on the boat. It looks like it was gonna be a lot of fun. It, I, I've been told it's a lot of fun, okay? And then lastly, for the DVs, if you will, if I forgot somebody, I'm so sorry, right? I'm not trying to forget a bunch of people. Um, Ms. Hansen, um, thank you very much for coming out. Thank you for representing AKT. Um, and I know that the incoming team, right, will continue their fabulous partnership, right, with AKT as we continue to try to, right, have the rising tide raise all the boats uh, that are in the local area. Ooh. Okay. Um, not in my family. So we were 50-50 today on whether or not my wife was actually going to be able to make it today um, based on some things that happened yesterday. It's like this ongoing theme with us now for the second PCS in a row that, you know, there's a hospital visit and things that are involved. Um, but I'm reminded, right, for um, my family that we always have to, right, love the hand that fate deals us and then we get to try to play it as our own. Um, so my love, thank you for your support. Thank you for always being here for me. Eloise and Vivian, man, you guys look beautiful today. We got some, you know, uh, some, a handful of things here for you guys. I think because mama does a fabulous job of taking notes, right, that I got everybody their favorite flowers today, right? So thank you very much. Um, I look forward to um, our journeys eventually to Universal and Disney and the national parks and like doing a whole bunch of stuff. Um, Dad, to you and Mom, thank you for shaping me into the human that I am. Thank you. Um, my brothers, and to your families right on the loop. Um, I could not have imagined going through this um, without leaders like you guys and families, true families and humans and the sense of community that we had on the loop. I'm truly appreciative of every single one of you. I'm actually 100% appreciative of the fact that the water buffalo is here. Um, inside joke, I took a bunch of money from Craig Bailey um, and then I gave him back a water buffalo. So that's like a $200,000 water buffalo that's sitting out there. You're welcome. <laughs> Um, to the one mission partner that I haven't talked about yet, right, uh, the 548th, um, America's DGS, uh, if you will. Dude, you guys are fabulous partners. Your family is unbelievable. It's phenomenal. Um, thank you. I'm going to make it through this one. Um, I could not have imagined going on this journey without that sister. It was a true pleasure. Um, you can go focus on your life chains. I will continue to focus on the kill chain and then like we'll meet up again. Maybe, maybe not in Texas, maybe you can come to Colorado, right? Um, Bog, an absolutely outstanding deputy. Um, I couldn't have asked for anything more. You do need to work on your fluid maneuvering a little bit, and I'm pretty sure Waldo will be able to help you with that. Um, now to the men and women of the wing. Um, it has been my deepest and most profound professional honor 
to serve with each and every one of you. Um, to be sure, mistakes were made, and I promise you things were overlooked. All of our failures can be laid at my feet, whereas all of the winged successes fall squarely on the backs of our airmen. Continue taking prudent risk, fight for decision authority at the lowest competent level, and give more grace than you take. Remember, kindness does not equal weakness. As is my tradition, I will leave you with two quotes, right? The first is from some dead Roman, right? Um, be tolerant with others and strict with yourself. And the last one is from Maya Angelou. Do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. This is the way. Thank you, Colonel Church. Colonel Church will now receive one final salute from the Deputy Commander, Colonel James Bartran, and the members of the 9th Reconnaissance Wing as a gesture of their respect and admiration for his leadership and vision. Sir, it's been an honor. At this time, we would like to take a moment to recognize a very special and important member of our family, Liz. On behalf of the men and women of the 9th Reconnaissance Wing, we thank you and your family sacrifices over the last two years. May your next chapter be filled with new adventures and memories. The change of command ceremony you will witness today is a time-honored tradition dating back to the 18th century during the reign of Frederick the Great of Prussia. During this time, organizational flags were developed with color arrangements and symbols unique to each particular unit. To this and its commanders, the soldiers of the unit would dedicate their loyalty and trust. When a change of command was to take place, the flag was passed to the individual assuming the command. This gesture was accomplished in front of the unit so all could see and witness their new leader assuming the dutiful position. This symbolic tradition has survived the ages of time and is now an important part of our military tradition. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the official change of command and change of responsibility. Attention to orders, Department of the Air Force, Headquarters, Air Combat Command, 16th Air Force, 9th Reconnaissance Wing, Special Order GS-05, by order of the Commander, Colonel Jeffrey Church will relinquish command of the 9th Reconnaissance Wing to Colonel Keegan McLeese, effective 9 July 2024, signed Lieutenant General Kevin Kennedy, Commander, 16th Air Force. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is my honor to present the commander to the, of the 9th Reconnaissance Wing, Colonel Keegan McLeese. Colonel McLeese, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you so much. Um, when you stand up here at a time like this, pretty much all you can say is thanks. I have done very little to uh, earn the respect uh, to be up here, uh, but I intend to, uh, to earn that respect as best I can in the upcoming years. Um, in the thank yous, I have to first thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. From Him, through Him, and to Him are all things. General Kennedy, 
Thank you so much uh, for your confidence in me, for the opportunity to command such a prestigious wing. Uh, I do not take that lightly, and already in our small conversation, I can tell that you are an empowering commander, and I appreciate that, uh, and best of luck as you transition in your command as well. Thank you very much, General. I appreciate that. Mako, uh, I love your, your charge to the airmen as you step down. Um, I would echo that through and through. If that's all I led with uh, for the next year's upcoming, uh, I would be content. Uh, you have hand, uh, hand wrapped, uh, handcrafted a wing that I am so excited to take command of and I do not take it lightly. Uh, thank you so much to you and Liz for your generosity, your thoughtfulness to me and my family and our transition in. You have been nothing but helpful uh, and you have made us to where we feel like we can be successful. We didn't have to tread lightly on eggshells. We knew we could come in here with confidence because of what you did and how you welcomed us. So thank you so much in so many ways that I can't even think to say. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Many thank yous have already been given, so I may skip some, not because uh, I don't care, but because there have been many thank yous already, and I know everyone is uh, probably ready to move on, uh, so bear with me here. Uh, the protocol team, though, I have to say thank you because you have helped me transition in as well, uh, and I thank you again for this ceremony being so successful. Um, Dude, you got a strong voice. That national anthem, I love a strong voice. And that was fun. That was fun. I love America and I love it even more when a national anthem sounds like that. And when the honor guard and the invocation come through, good stuff. Thank you very much. Uh, everyone in formation, hang in there. We're almost done. Uh, I do appreciate it. Thanks for being out here and thanks for, uh, for taking the time uh, to be there. And thanks for the leadership uh, by all the commanders out there as well for that. Uh, to all of those that have put on this display uh, behind us, uh, it looks awesome. I know it takes effort to make all that happen. I love how uh, ammo is represented out there as well. Thank you very much for putting this whole display uh, on there, especially for back there. To the front office team, I don't even know you yet, but you've helped me out so much. Thank you for the welcome uh, that you've given me and my family. Uh, it was undeserved, but it was very appreciated. So thank you for how well you have welcomed us already. Gold Country Inn, I had way too many guests probably for what I should have, but I have a lot of people who I love and have expressed their love for me by showing up. So wherever the Gold Country Inn, FSS is at, thank you for your hospitality to my guests. I really appreciate it and to my family. Uh, BBC and MHO for uh, uh, welcoming us to the neighborhood and bringing us in. Thank you so much uh, for that welcome. Finance, MPF, TMO, you helped us get it settled in to where I don't have that stress for me and my family. We could focus elsewhere. I really appreciate it. Advanced Programs and Security Office, no issues there. Thank you so much for the welcome by this base. And if I have forgotten you, I genuinely apologize for that. Family. Family is so important. It is what allows us to thrive as military members as we move from place to place, picking up and moving, sometimes six months, sometimes three years, sometimes different. But we move so much that we need to have a sense of family no matter where we're at if we want to be able to be stable mentally, socially, uh, and in our professional jobs. And so I want to thank some family. Uh, personally, Dottie, kiddos, you guys rock. I am looking forward to this. You have made it to where I can stand up here. Um, just the hospitality, Dottie, that you have put on just in the home in the last week, all of the settling in and the t 14 different times you've done it. Kiddos, you rock. I am looking forward to this time, and I promise you things at home aren't going to change. We're still going to have a good time. Um, Mom and Dad, thank you so much. You're always here at these events. I know you always care. I'm an only child, so I'm kind of the only game in town. But I still do genuinely appreciate the fact that, that you always want to be there. You always want to help. And uh, you always are helpful. And you always are there for me. And I really appreciate that and for our family. Uh, Nathan and Michelle, uh, thank you so much for showing up. You represent a lot of family by being here. Uh, I know it takes a lot of effort on your part to be here. So thank you so much. And thank you for your care for my wife uh, and, and my children. Um, uh, Uncle Brian and Lori, thank you so much for being here. We've, uh, they've got a son who's at the academy too, and they are best friends, and they are going through it right now in basics. So um, it's good to see you here, and it's good to uh, feel like we're, uh, we're teammates in that as well, in addition to being family, and all those that you represent. Military family, right? So you have your family, and then you've got your military family. No matter where you go, you make these special friendships and relationships that you really cherish and that you continue to maintain, and as you maintain those, you find that resiliency. And so I've got a lot of people here that are representing a lot of military family that we have, 
but I will say Crystal, Jack, Nate, and Tyson that you represent, and uh, Trinity that you represent, you're great, and you're always great, and you've been especially great this past week, so thank you so much for your help and helping us get settled in. They came all the way from Phoenix just to help my wife and I get settled into a home. Who does that? Family does that, and that's military family. I really appreciate that. Slick, Michaela, you're always there. We have only known each other since 2019. I feel like I've known you an entire lifetime. You guys are so engaged and so um, such great friends that we can rely on you. Um, the friendship that we have, I genuinely mean this, feels so much deeper than since 2019. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for being here. Really appreciate that. Fast, thanks for being here, bro. Really appreciate it, man, and I hope we get to work together in the future. Uh, to the Byerleys, thank you so much for caring for our son as his sponsor family, and you care so much that you came out here just to be here. Um, thank you. The care that you're providing for him cannot be expressed. It can be expressed in words. All right, so those are some military family, and then, we have special church family. Uh, we have gone to different churches every single place we've gone. And uh, I've got church family here from my previous assignment all the way from Phoenix. So to all of those representing Desert Hills Bible Church, thank you so much. To include uh, Dr. Zagoda, thank you so much for being here to represent the eldership. I really appreciate your guys' care and the time that you spend to come out here. And, uh, and the Sfonskis and the Taylors, thank you so much. Uh, thanks for taking the time to show you care because it means a lot to us as a family to, to show that and all those who would love to be here on that. And then um, also in addition to that, uh, Grace Bible Church. We've only been here for a couple weeks. We've already gotten plugged in. And I've already got a posse out here. I love seeing my new church family who I, ha I probably know three of their names. But they love us enough to come out here and say, yeah, we want to be a part of this. It'd be great. I see George back there. It's great. I really appreciate you all showing up. And I look forward to these upcoming years of getting to know each other and to be a family together as the body of Christ. So thank you so much for being here. And then to my local community that I see here, I cannot wait to get to know you all, get to know you better, and to uh, make some great relationships and uh, make some forward, even more forward progress than has already been made at integrating the community with BLR Air Force Base. That's a real intent of this command that I want to set forth. And I thank you for being here and showing that you care. And I intend to show you that I care and our team cares by keeping you fully involved because we've got a lot of change uh, coming up in the upcoming time. Recce Town USA, um, what a privilege to be a part of Recce Town. And to get to uh, command this is a, is a true privilege. And when I think of uh, Recce Town, there have been a lot of leadership. There has been a lot of leadership uh, in the Ninth Reconnaissance Wing, and it has often led the way in many ways, whether that's an SR-71 going into harm's way, leading the way in to check things out and get some reconnaissance, or, or whether that's a, a U-2 that is leading the way in uh, to get some great reconnaissance um, and everything in between. I want to cherish, represent, and honor the legacy and the heritage that we are inheriting from Recce Town USA, and I want to make sure that we carry that forward, uh, and I want to make sure that we lead well. We're going to honor that heritage and legacy in the upcoming years. When called on, we are going to always do three things that we have always done well, and we're going to do those particularly in these upcoming years. We are going to deploy, we are going to redeploy, and we are going to reconstitute, and I'll elaborate on that uh, in the upcoming uh, week here as we have some commander's calls, but we are going to deploy, redeploy, and reconstitute well, and we're gonna have a lot of challenges with that. The entire time, we're gonna take care of the family. All the different family that I expressed, we're gonna make, sure we make sure that we do that well. And we're gonna do it all with integrity, we're gonna do it with service, and we're gonna do it with excellence. As we come to a, uh, a time of a, a change of responsibility ceremony, I know that's kind of a new thing to uh, many in the Air Force. I, I, I looked it up a little bit because it was unfamiliar to me as well, but apparently this is something that's a little more common in the joint world and in the Army world. And so what you're going to see is a change of responsibility from the wing uh, command chiefs. Uh, Bree, thank you so much for your positive, infectious attitude that obviously has infected the entire wing in their positivity. Thank you for bringing that, and thank you for your engagement with the community. I really cherish that, and I thank you so much, and best of luck and Godspeed in your future. Chief Creek, I wanted you to be on our team because I know that you have the people skills that we need and the people skills that I need you to have for this wing, and that's why I want you to be on this team, and that's what I'm looking forward to so much. So with that, I want to say thank you. I appreciate all of you being here, and let's do this.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Colonel McLeese. Colonel McLeese will now receive his first salute and a warm welcome from the Deputy Commander, Colonel James Bartran, and members of the 9th Reconnaissance Wing as their commander. Sir, welcome to the 9th. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the T-38 behind the stage. It is a time-honored tradition for the Wing flagship to be renamed with each new commander. Crew Chief, Mr. Colby Wise, will now reveal the 9th Reconnaissance Wing commander's name. The change of responsibility ceremony is steeped in military tradition and serves the function of rendering honors to the departing command chief and providing official rec recognition of the transfer of responsibility to the incoming command chief. The ceremony reinforces the non-commissioned officer's authority in the Air Force and highlights their support to the chain of command. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the official change of responsibility. First Sergeant Ray Hernandez passes the colors to Chief Master Sergeant Oliver in final relinquishment to her authority and leadership. Chief Master Sergeant Brianna Oliver passes the colors to Colonel McLeese, signifying the relinquishing of her duties and gratitude for the opportunity to care for all airmen and their families assigned to the 9th Reconnaissance Wing. Chief Master Sergeant Creek will now assume responsibilities. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. As we welcome our new commander and command chief, we would like to extend a warm welcome to their families, Colonel McLeese's wife Dorothy and their children Corton, Carolyn, Madeline, and Caven, Chief Creek's wife Kathleen and their daughter Sadie. On behalf of the Ninth Wing, please know of our appreciation for the sacrifices you both will make for our wing and Air Force moving forward. Ladies and gentlemen, in keeping with Air Force tradition, please stand and remain standing for the singing of the Air Force song and the departure of the official party. Off we go into the wild blue yonder, climbing high into the sun. Here they come, zooming to meet our thunder. Adam, now give her the gun, give her the gun. Down we dive, sprouting our flames from under, off with one hell of a roar. We live in fame or go down in flames. Hey, nothing can stop the U.S. Air Force. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. Please join us for a reception to the right side of Dock 8 to welcome Colonel Keegan McLeese, his command chief, Chief Master Sergeant Stephen Creek, and their families. Thank you for attending today's ceremony.